Welcome back to Halloween and Christmas 3, I'm Adam J. Today we're looking at the newest offering from director Paul W.S. Anderson, whose career started off pretty promising with movies like Mortal Kombat and Event Horizon, and quickly went to shit with adaptations of the Resident Evil series. Oh god. Now, I've talked in great length about my thoughts on his adaptations of those movies before. If you're interested, I'll leave links in the description below. I'm not a fan of those movies at all, but I admit that a lot of my hatred for them comes from being a huge fan of the video games. It is my favorite video game franchise, so seeing it adapted poorly made me very upset as a fan. I've actually found that many people who have never played the Resident Evil games do really like the movies. I would encourage them to actually play the games, but if all they want is dumb, mindless action, then... Hey, more power to him. That being said, I have never played Monster Hunter. Let's just get that out of the way. I have no connection to this series whatsoever. So when I heard he was making an adaptation of Monster Hunter after the Resident Evil series had mercifully fucking ended, I actually made it a point not to familiarize myself with the game series. I may do so down the line, but I for once just wanted to go into a Paul W.S. Anderson film and just enjoy it as a movie. Was I able to? Eh, kinda. Kinda. Just kinda. Yeah. Monster Hunter sees Mila Jovovich as Artemis, a soldier trapped in a world filled with monsters, who teams up with Tony J, an actual monster hunter, to survive and get herself back home. Oh, and Ron Perlman's there with this really stupid looking wig, and there's a bunch of soldiers that I really don't give a shit about. Now, I gotta say this for the film. Being able to enjoy it just as a film, uh, with no frame of reference for the video games, I will say that I enjoyed this more than any of the Resident Evil films he directed. Again, this could be due to my fanboy bias toward that series, but despite Monster Hunter's many faults, I found it to be a solidly entertaining time waster. But first, let's get the negatives. First off, uh, the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie kinda sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. The soldiers you saw in the trailer, don't get attached to them. They all feel the same and they have no purpose being in this fucking movie. And if you really don't think that they're gonna die in the first act, then you're on fucking Quaaludes. No, seriously, these soldiers, they have literally no purpose. It made me wonder why they even had to do the whole portal from another world thing. Like, why did we need a fish out of water story? Why couldn't it just be Tony J and Mila Jovovich in this monster ridden world, being from this monster ridden world, just kicking ass? I, I don't know. I guess we just needed an excuse to pat out the body count. Another big problem, and this is something that was prevalent in Resident Evil The Final Chapter, is the distractingly bad editing. You have two actors here who have shown in the past that they can clearly do well choreographed action and kick ass on their own. So, why are you trying to ruin it with so many cuts during the fight scenes? It, it just... I don't get it. I just don't. Like, really, it's beyond distracting. Ron Perlman shows up, as I said, and... The outfit they gave him is laughably fucking ridiculous. I mean, like... You look at this thing and you just want to bust out laughing. It's so stupid looking. I loved the armor outfits for the other two characters, but for Ron, it was like they wanted him to look as hilariously awful as possible. It, my God, that fucking wig, that fucking wig. He looks like old man Goku. I, I just don't get the choice for that, but that's usually an issue I have with some of Anderson's movies is that some of the aesthetic choices just feel distracting. You know, like the hilariously bad sequel baiting at the end of this film. Yeah, given the current state of the world and the coronavirus, I doubt this movie is getting a sequel. Just, you know, putting that one out there. But on to positives. The monsters look pretty cool. From what I've been told, the look of the monsters and armor and weapons are pretty much taken verbatim from the game, which is commendable. Evidently, Anderson worked with the game company to make them look as close to the game as possible. Now, whether he did the same for the story or not, I have no fucking idea. Again, never played Monster Hunter, know nothing about the game, so I really don't know if it follows it well. I mean, Anderson has shown he can literally go in either direction with that shit, either adapting it perfectly or just making up shit as he goes along, you know? I don't know, it's like Sophie's choice with him. 
The movie establishes that these monsters are a bitch to take down and require special weapons and methods of fighting to do it. In fact, there's a training montage in this movie that I really wish it had Eye of the Tiger playing in the background, but didn't. So when the movie comes out, I'm just going to edit that in because I need that in my life. I, I really do. Come on, Mila Jovovich, Tony J, trading with Eye of the Tiger in the background. Who doesn't want to fucking hear that? That's badass. Despite the bad editing, some of the action moments are pretty damn entertaining. When I saw the trailer, I was expecting just a fun, dumb action flick, and that's pretty much what I got. I mean, let's be real here, folks. I wasn't expecting much else from a movie called Monster Hunter. There's hunters, they hunt monsters, the end. That's all I expected, and for the most part, that's pretty much what this movie delivered. Mila Jovovich and Tony J do have solid chemistry on screen together. Again, I really wish they had ditched the fish out of water storyline for Artemis, but on the bright side, at least she's not playing Alice anymore. Yeah, I could pretty much just take that and call it a win. When the film has Tony J and Mila Jovovich and he starts training her and they start to connect a bit, that's when the movie becomes a solidly entertaining action flick. So if you could sort of just muscle your way past that opening act and some of the bad editing, you may have a decent time with this one because, well, quite frankly, as I said, the first 20 to 25 minutes of this movie is pretty fucking useless. So for me, I'm really mixed on this movie. Despite an abysmal first act and some bad editing, I was mostly entertained with this one. I think the film I can liken this to the most is probably the most recent Predator film in that I can acknowledge it's not very good as a whole, but I can sit here and say that I wasn't entertained while I was watching it. And for that, I'm going to give Monster Hunter a C. Look, I'm being realistic here. This is a movie that you can sit down, turn your brain off, and just have fun with as a casual moviegoer. And I won't lie, it felt good not to completely despise a Paul Anderson film again. That being said, if you're a fan of the video games, you may want to seek another opinion because... I simply have no frame of reference for that. So did you see Monster Hunter? What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more.